Hello and welcome to Hashtag Ambitious. I stumbled across a BBC documentary the other week called DIY Generation Young Hustlers. The documentary is presented by one extra DJ, Jams Supernova, who meets six young entrepreneurs who want to do things their own way. On the documentary is Adam Ali, who won the National Entrepreneur of the Year 2018 title after pitching to Peter Jones. The documentary follows Adam over the summer as he builds his company DigiC. After watching the documentary, I just had to reach out to Adam and get him on the podcast. We talk about his journey, his business, his mentoring from Akshay Rupareli, the founder of doorsteps.co.uk, and his time on the documentary. I hope you enjoy it. Adam, welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on. I don't know where to start with you because you've, you've won National Entrepreneur of the Year 2018 after you put into Peter Jones. Uh, you are starring on a BBC Newsbeat documentary called DIY Generation Young Customers. Yep. You're also on the news this week. You are literally becoming an overnight business celebrity. <laughs> so I just don't know where to start with you. Yeah, I mean, um, it's all it's all come up come up once really. Um, it, it started when I was very young. I'll, I'll start from the beginning. It started when I was when I was very young. When I was 13 years old, um, I was in high school. I wanted to make a bit of extra cash on the side, and my uncle had a recovery truck that. He didn't have any use for, so I said, I'll, I'll put it up for sale for you. So I put it up for sale for him. A buyer came from France. He came to pick it up, so I advertised that through Gumtree. And from that, I'd made a £100 commission my uncle gave me. And that was the, the start of me thinking, wow, do you know what? Business pays well. It's a, it's a real buzz. And from then on, it was that, that same year that um, I had a, a love for technology. So I was selling mobile phones uh, through eBay. And um, and then I was on my Xbox once and Microsoft wanted uh, testers for the new Connect that they were launching. So I just submitted my application. They liked it so much that they uh, sent me the Connect three months before the launch. And I ended up being a tester for them. So I gave them feedback. So over the years, it was almost a nurturing of technology, a love for, for enterprise, a love for entrepreneurship. And you've probably seen in the documentary, my father, um, he always said, don't do business. He's a, so he's a self-employed <laughs> man. He said, do not do business. It's not the way to go. And I can, I can understand where people come from and I could understand where my dad was coming from. However, it was this drive inside me that, that created um, created DigiC today. So um, fast forward a couple of years, um, I'm going into college and I said, I want to study business. And the, the man at the reception said, well, we do business, but we're starting a, a new course. It's from Peter Jones of Dragon's End. And I said, okay, I've, I've watched him. He's a, he's a tall man. He's made his money. You know, we're interested. So, um, so yeah, I, I went into the academy, uh, Peter Jones Enterprise Academy, not knowing what to think, not knowing what to expect. I was very, very raw. You could say, I didn't really understand business. I always thought business is maybe, one hit wonders. So this this was my mentality of thinking. I thought it was one hit wonders. It was lucky people. It was people that may have been privileged in, in their background. But in the academy, what happened was we were we were networking and just within Huddersfield, we were networking with with millionaires, with business people that had been there and done that. And I thought, wow, this is a whole new world that I've never experienced before. So instead of just learning the theory, we were actually doing, we were networking, attending exhibitions. We were um, en entering competitions for like Canon and Jessup's. So they, they had a competition to come up with a new marketing campaign. We entered that as part of the, the college team and ended up winning by pitching in front of the directors, pitching in front of the marketing team. So all the all those real life experiences and opportunities, you know, opened up a whole new world to me. So from from then on, on the, on on the same course, what happened was I met my partner Annalise. So we're both very entrepreneurial. Anyways, we met each other, um, and we then went on to having a baby. So all the young parents know, any any parents know, you've got to bring the bread to the table and, and I started to work. Mm -hmm. So um, I was in and out of jobs. It was a very daunting, very, um, it was a very, it was a crazy, crazy experience to have a child and then to think, wow, I've actually got to put food on the table. I've got to buy buy them nappies, essentially. Um, life life was, was uh difficult and it was one of those so I started working in, in petrol stations I started working in call centers 
I remember being in, in one company, and um, I won't say the name, but I was in a company, and I, <laughs> and I emailed the director. I said, your website, you know, this can happen, this can happen, this can happen. And then he emailed, emailed me back, and it was a bit of a blunt reply, and I thought to myself, you know what, I'm, I'm better than this. I, every day I felt like my skills, my persona, my, you know, my bounce was, was just being dulled out. And I was going through retail jobs um, and I thought to myself, something's got to change. Um, so I've, I've skipped out the part where um, <laughs> since the age of 13, I was helping my father with his traditional signage business. And through that time of helping my father with his signage business, I used to always think signage has so much potential and um, but over the years again you know after having a child things like that it was something where you know the first priorities come up working and uh, and so anyways I I thought I need to set up a business you know every day I'm being dulled down and I turned back to the Peter Jones Enterprise Academy um, and I said let me do another year because I, I, I wanted I want to do something and then it, it was like a light bulb moment it was digital signage I thought okay signage is a market and industry that is decreasing but digital signage is increasing so why not look into that so I was there trying to set up a brand trying to understand it more but how I got my first order back in May was a real just it was it was God just sent it for me really I, I ordered a pizza from a takeaway I went into the takeaway the owner was fitting out his store and I, I said I said to him why don't you put in digital signage not knowing that I was going to be the one to supply him. And he said, <laughs> he, said um, he said, yeah, well, he was, you know, he came to me, he said, it's, it's too complicated, blah, 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 blah. And I said, um, okay, I'll, I'll do it for you. Just give me some time. I'll get you a quote and I'll, you know, I'll give you the best service, etc. And he actually went with me and it was a crazy experience because I just had to learn on the job. I had to, you know, find the suppliers, understand how the software works, but it, it came a success. I made some money, and and yeah, th there it was. DGC was actually actually born from then on. Then, wow. that, so that's that's the whole background. That's the whole grit. Then, um, you know, uh, started to get a bit of fame, and this this is how the fame the fame happens. The fame. Happens. <laughs> so I'm in I'm in college still. I've this is after I've got my order, and um, there's every year Peter Jones he owns, he hosts a competition called National Entrepreneur of the Year. My classmate was actually supposed to enter and he was supposed to enter and the teacher said to me why don't why don't you enter and I said okay then I'll I'll enter definitely because I, I didn't even know the competition was happening I entered it on the off chance and they invited me down to the Peter Jones uh, head office I was there in front of these uh, all these big business business owners of, of Peter Jones um, you know Peter Jones uh, key team I was pitching to them in, in like a a boardroom style, something out of The Apprentice. And they, they really liked it. And, and that's where it all started, really. And then I, I made it to the final, pitched in front of Peter Jones, in front of a few other, you know, huge entrepreneurs. And it was in front of 400 people as well. It was, um, wow. you know, really, really tense. They had money stacked up on the table. So it was like a live Dragon's Den style pitch where they, <laughs> you know, it was a five minute pitch. And then five minutes, they, they really grilled me with the questioning. And then, yeah, I ended up winning. I got the £5,000 investment, and that really, really helped uh, the business. Then on, after that, came back, came back home and just started really grafting, really, really grafting with the business. The BBC approached me, and they said, we're making a, a show on young entrepreneurs, a, new, a Newsbeat documentary, and they've been following me over the summer, going out, getting orders. And then, uh, yeah, just the other week, it was, it was released. Everyone really, really liked it. They seemed to buzz off it. And then um, in, in the North, we have Look North uh, as, a, as a, document, a news documentary. And um, they, mm. in, they invited me on and said, we'd love to meet you. And, and then since then, the, the response has been absolutely huge. Today, a very, very well-known, um, I, I can't say too many details, but a, but a huge... <laughs> um, yeah, it's, it's very, very early stages. Today was the first phone call, so I, I would never jinx myself so it was a huge I'm the, same, I'm the same I'm the same yeah you've got to you've got to so uh, it's a huge um a huge uh, oh gosh a, a huge public venue a huge public venue mm. and that's going to be an absolutely amazing deal which you'll see hopefully by May 19 and yeah so it's been a huge journey huge journey and a lot's happened but yeah it's 
Had they seen the show? Had they? How did they hear about you? So um, he he rang me today and he said I, I I was coming. I came home and I I was just sipping my cup of tea like you do in Yorkshire, just having a cup of tea. <laughs> and uh, I've seen you on uh, on Look North, and uh, I really liked you. And, and we were actually looking to embed technology into our into our venue that they they're redoing, um, and we're we're spending six figure money, and we'd like you to be involved. So that's really. Um, been a big buzz today, definitely a big buzz. So hopefully a very, very big project moving forward. There's something about your personality. So when you're on the show, I was I was attracted to you. I was like, I really want to speak to Adam. You seem to have a personality that people really draw to. So it sounds like you are getting a lot more attention because of the show. Mm-hmm. How are you handling it all? Um, uh, one, one step at a time. I'm not getting... The, the thing is, with, with the show, with with coming on Look North, so when, when I was on Look North, they, they put makeup on my face and everything. You know, <laughs> not, it's not a fame, but I think it's best for me not to delve into it too much. It's great. It, it's getting me publicity, etc. Um, and I'm just... I'm riding the wave at the moment, but... Um, these are these are the these are the you know these are the the nice bits these are the glamorous bits mm. there's the hard graft of the business you know every, every month i've got to bring that money in i've got to hit my targets and and the glamorous bits are awesome because it makes you feel good about what you're doing um so it's a it's a big balance you know i i don't get too caught up in in the glamorous side too much although it is what what most people see um, so it's just a huge, a huge balance. Um, but overall, it's just positive for my brand and for the business moving forward. Yeah. People seem to really, I mean, as you know, this uh, people buy from people and you've got a really great personality and people are really drawn towards you. Are you going to double down on your personal brand? Is that going to be part of your marketing strategy going forward? Uh, yes. I mean, I always, I always knew I had it in me to be a personable person and, and uh, yeah, like I said, when I was working in the call centers and, and things like that, my personality was really, really being dulled down. And I believe that most um, young people out there that maybe get caught up in, in maybe a little bit of a trap or a little bit of a cycle, their personalities are 100% where they want them to be. So um, so yeah, being on the glamorous side of business and being in business and, and having all this fame um, has definitely um, brought out the, the best in my personality. Mm. In terms of uh, doubling down and um, getting a personal brand, yeah, definitely. Everyone loves to do business with with people. Um, I just watched a, a LinkedIn some uh, a report from LinkedIn, and they were saying that people side hustles are no longer supposed to be a secret. People like to see what your side hustle is. And um, my side hustle is my main hustle, which is <laughs> <laughs> that don't make sense. But um, but yeah, no, technology is what I'd like to be known for. People like like my personality and I'm I'm just glad that people, you know, are, are taking me um, in a positive light. I'm I'm glad that people are liking and, and being in, inspired by me. But yeah, definitely we'll we'll see what, where it goes. Like I say to everyone, it's very, very early stages. It's the beginning of my journey. There's so much more to go. I'm still working to shake up the technology and the digital signage industry. So so yeah. I really loved the show and I thought it was, it was just so entertaining. And what I noticed with yourself was from the beginning of the show to the end of the show, there were, you could see a, a massive growth. Was that the case? Did, did you grow uh, as a business person on the show? Yes, yes, definitely. I mean, they, they followed me and um, they followed me the same time that I won the award from Peter Jones. So they followed me for maybe five, six months. Um, so that, that growth was definitely, definitely real. Bear in mind, my, my business, I've only started it since May. And um, so I did win the award after that. Um, I was running around like a headless chicken, going <laughs> here, there, and everywhere, and um, going to small, some small takeaways, and and really, really learning the market. And and I was expecting that, you know, I, I told Peter Jones, I told uh, Fergal Donovan that um, I'm I'm expecting to learn the industry. I'm I'm a young person, and you know, I'm not I'm not I'm not I'm not the owner of Tesla. I'm not I'm not a big technology person either. But I'm I'm here to learn the industry. I'm I'm here to take everything on board and move forward. And um, so I knew it was going to take a, a while for things to pick up and um 
and yeah, there, there was a huge growth. And then I really started to look into cold calling and I've become a bit of a, a cold caller. So watch your phones. Uh, <laughs> and, and so, yeah, it's all about canvassing, finding the right clients, the people that respect a business that wants to look in the future, that, that respects technology and, and wants to move. Um, I keep saying move forward, but it, but it is. It's moving forward. It's being digitally inclined and and um futuristic you know um so yeah it's been everything is a huge learning curve every day i'm learning stuff um right now i'm not where i want to be it's just the beginning of the business and i i understand for the next year especially with that phone call that i've uh, you know received recently every project is going to be a learning curve every day is a learning curve on the show you were you were mentored by Akshay Ruparelli. Yes. Is he still your mentor? Yeah, we keep in touch. Akshay is absolutely great. He um the funny thing is the uh, I wanted someone else as my as my mentor. I told the BBC I <laughs> I want someone else but when you think of a mentor you think of someone that's maybe 40 50 got a lot of time on their hands um, and and has the time to mentor you and the experience and they turned around and they said uh, yeah we've got your mentor he's called Akshay Ruprelia and he's 20 he's younger than you and I said okay that's going to be my mentor I said okay but the funniest thing is is that just two weeks before that I'd, I'd seen his face on the internet and I'd read, read up about him and I mm. thought his story if, if you think my, my story is in inspirational his story is phenomenal you know he's younger than me his business was valued and um, before he just got funded at something like 18 million pounds and, and he's just got mm. crowdfunding from like 800 people so he has absolutely shaken his industry that's a big thing i'm um i'm, I'm about is that if you're going to be in industry you've got to shake it up and that's what i want to do with digital science really shake up that industry but actually he's a mentor he's a friend and yeah we, we still talk and he he's an absolutely great guy he's very very when you meet him he's he's got a very calming persona he's very inqui- inquisitive and um, but he's fast on his feet he's He's, he's a really, really great guy. Absolutely. With the mentorship with him, do you, do you meet him every so often? Does he? How does it work? Yeah, so I met, I met him during during the filming, um, and and we still stay in, in touch with with technology. There's no need to really meet you know meet somebody. It's like now we're doing the podcast over the over the phone. Um, yeah. Technology is amazing. So we we call each other back and then. And um, right now. He is driving his business forward. He's in the key phases, as am I, you know. So, um, no, we definitely keep in touch. And uh, I, I'm sure we're going to be, we're still going to be in touch come 40 years from now. What was the best piece of advice he gave you? I think the best piece of advice was not what was said, but what, what was sh- uh, shown. So the best thing about meeting him was that when I went to go see him, Again, I was I was hesitant um, because you know you expect a mentor to be older than you. However, <laughs> I went to go when I went to his office and I saw his team of twenty people and I saw how his business was moving and I saw his persona. It was the the inspiration that wow, he's he's a young a young person and I can do it as well because it's it's very very easy as a young person to go into business to see somebody that is uh, to see business as a whole bunch of um, middle-aged men and I'll say <laughs> it is um, you know females and young people or if you're part of an ethnic minority those those three things um, may be daunting for someone to enter the world of business but that's mm. not the case you know if you're mm. ethnic if you're young if you're a female the whole world is out there for you to conquer absolutely yeah no I completely agree with that Actually, he's such an inspirational person. And I kind of, I, I've not met actually, but I do follow him and, and I, I do like what he's doing. I find him really inspirational. And I feel like your journey seems quite similar because actually like yourself is embracing going on news and embracing being um, a bit of a business celebrity because he's got a personality like yours that people are drawn to and they, they people want to learn from him. So I do see similarities there. So Running your own business, you, you, you have to do everything when you start off, don't you? You become a jack of all trades. Yes. So where do you spend most of your time in your business at the moment? Um, so in at the early stages, of course, it's all the planning, it's the marketing, it's everything. Um, to this day, it's all about, um, today, it's all about my structure. So at the end of every day, I have my accounting time, you know, set, you know, uh, collate all the receipts, everything like that. Um, there's 
two days in the week that I'll dedicate to sales canvassing. So I'll be cold calling, following up leads, things like that. Then I need to uh, split the time up into maybe one or two days I'm doing installations and then one or two days when I'm, um, you know, managing and, and doing other things and, and marketing. And so, yeah, it is absolutely hectic when you're setting up and doing everything yourself but it's the best thing that you can do because you understand every part of your business like now it will, I'm reaching a stage where um, I'm comfortable and thinking that I definitely need an office I'm definitely wanting to employ people I'm definitely really really wanting to grow in the next year so um, when I do employ someone because I've doubled in design because I've doubled in installation because I'm a marketeer and a, a sales canvasser and a account manager everything i sort of have a, a good idea when it comes to employing people in uh, in that sector you know so it, it it's got its pros it's got its cons but yeah definitely looking to employ you next month okay so i mean starting a business it's it's hard work and every day is a new problem but what's been your biggest challenge so far and what did you do to overcome it uh the biggest challenge so far has been has been uh, getting orders, absolutely uh, getting orders, getting the ball rolling. The, obviously, the media publicity has helped um, all the time, but I'll, I'll be frank, there's been hundreds of people that visit my site, and not, not everyone that visits your site, not everyone that says congratulations to you, not everyone is going to place an order with you. And it sounds very, very crude. It sounds very cold. But unfortunately, you, you sort of have to think like that. Who is a solid lead? Who is actually going to yeah. bring money to the table? And, um, and yeah, so that, that's been the biggest thing I have approached every well, most types of business all retailers takeaways fast foods um to to the bigger chains and it's just getting that feel for market finding out if i am contacting a big chain who do i speak to head of facilities head of technology the managing director or do i do i go through one of the staff so it's all about how do i make relationships with my clients and how do i how do i find the right people to work with and that that's the that's the biggest the biggest thing because once i meet a client once i understand them you know and and there's a there's something in, in place and we're working together the design the installation everything that all that all falls into play fantastic so what's next for you now uh next it is growth it is you know growth and, and definitely shake up the industry what is next now is taking on bigger better projects uh hiring staff uh getting an office and just really, really making a difference and being heard in the industry of digital signage. Right now, I'm being heard in the public, but I, I, I'm going to be a big key player, hopefully, and, and just shake up the digital signage industry. And also, um, yeah, just just keep expanding as a as a person. Keep finding my my own, like like you said, my own brand. Keep building that and keep building the brand of the business. So yeah, just up, up and beyond. Is there going to be a second part to DIY Generation Young Hustlers? Because I love this show and, and I hope there is a second part. Is there going to be one? Well, um, the way as most companies uh, operate is, um, is there enough demand? So it's if there's enough viewers, if there's enough demand, enough people asking, um, you know, there might be a part two. But there, there will definitely be in a year's time, um, uh, you know, I will definitely just ring up and say, you know, let, let, let's, let's get me on the radio at least and let's just talk about how I'm doing now. Because, mm. you know, there, there, will, there will be a, a catch up, I'm, I'm sure, if there's enough demand, hopefully next year. I love, I love the way you approach that and the, and the way you, you, you said that then. That's really inspirational. You said before, growing as a person as well. Are you doing anything to keep learning? Do you read any books or listen to any podcasts or watch any programs on the internet or on the television? Do you do, do anything to keep keep your mind sharp at all? Yeah, absolutely. I, I do everything. So I, I, I meet people, you know, meet new people every single day. In terms of watching stuff, I, I try not to watch anything now. Anything that is watching is, you can't really multitask. So I listen to, listen to things. So I'm listening to uh, Five Live, listen to Radio 4. Um, I read a lot of The Guardian. I read um, I read the trends. So I read a lot of white papers. There's a, um, in my industry, there's a digital signage today, and they have a lot of white papers. So um, I'm just 
anything and everything I'm learning. Um, but yeah, more specifically, it's about my industry. And the other thing which I've not mentioned is uh, being a father as well. You know, I've, I've got a lot of this fame, you could say. I'm building the business, but um, I'm, I'm trying to also keep in mind that I've got a son and I've got to, you know, take him out and, um, you know, enjoy that time with him because he grows up so fast. He turned two just the other week. He's growing up so fast. And I don't want to miss out on that. You know, I, I get invited to here, left, right and centre. But, you know, if I don't have time with my son, then what, what worth is the business then in the end? Absolutely. So do you dedicate time or do you just, do you just like switch off? What, how, how are you managing the balance? Because you've got a new family, you've got a new business. You've got so much going on. What, what do you do to, to manage it all? Um, well, I... I... I, I don't try to stick between nine to five. I'll say that first and foremost. I don't believe in, in nine to five, Monday to Friday, in terms of working. That doesn't mean I, I do shorter days. I probably do longer days. But it means that um, sometimes I, I start work maybe five, six in the morning, and I'll just finish a bit earlier because, you know, I think days should be dedicated by, by the sun and everything else. Anyways, so yeah. I agree. I agree with you. I think it's the old industrial you know, nine to five, that that needs to disappear yeah. at some point because that is 100 years old and we live in a, a different world now. So I agree with you on that. I'm the same. Good, good. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's the, the way I, 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 I grew up thinking was why should a person work five days a week and spend more time at work than he does with his family. Now, I, I understand first and foremost, especially setting up this business, I've dedicated probably seven days a week or weeks on end, um, and it's not, but it's not fair on the family. So what I do is I just I make sure I do things every day. You know, the time that I spend with my missus, the time that I spend with my son, I treat it as though it's the last day that I'm going to be here. And, and if you, you live life like that, then you're not going to, you know, you're not going to look back and regret. And uh, it's like, for example, this morning, I had an hour where, I wasn't I, I wasn't too busy so well we're looking at 10 a.m so people should be thinking 10 a.m friday he should be working right now mm. but there was some time that i could do on my laptop and um, some work that i could do on my laptop so um i went to the play gym with my son i let him just go off and i was just sat there with my with my laptop and um you know on the phone and stuff i think the other parents were looking at me like why is he brought it <laughs> um but yeah so i switch things up i always make sure i'm doing doing things with my son i always make sure you know i'm i'm always there at home in, in the evenings and things like that and um Definitely. I've, I've seen it many a times where someone has been so di di divulged in their business that they've forgotten about their family. And, and mm -hmm. you know, a common thing sometimes in business is that you do business all your life, maybe 40, 50 years, and, and you say to yourself or you say to the people around you that um, I'm trying to make life better for you, my children, or for you, my partner. But in reality, that means nothing. If you're not spending time with your partner and with your child, then you know it will sting you in the back later in life. So I'm just uh, I'm just covering my back. I'm 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 just being there for for my family. That's that's the main thing. Um, but yeah, but no. In terms of business, it's growth and fully going ahead. It's it's a balance. It is a balance that I am learning about every single day. Absolutely. Again, you started a business. You're you're on the television. You've got a new family. There's so much going on. You sound so calm, so confident, and so relaxed. And all of that together is quite a high stress yeah, environment. I mean, what is your mindset with all this? Um, well, it's, I don't know. Um, when when I was pitch um, about to pitch, so about to pitch the semi final pitch in when I was pitching to Peter Jones. So this was before I pitched to Peter Jones. I remember my heart just pounding, absolutely pounding. The lady that was bringing me into the room, she said, um, wow, you don't look nervous. You look very, very calm. And I said, really? My heart is absolutely pounding. So every day, my heart is pounding. I, I won't even uh, try to deny that my heart is <laughs> and a, adrenaline rush every day. And it's like a bit of fear. It's a bit of excitement. It's everything. Um, but... I don't know. I, I don't know how to answer that, answer that question. It is, it is high stress and we will just see how it, how it turns out. You know, right now, you know, I love the taste of success. 
I love to see the smile on my partner's face and the smile on my child's face, the smile on my parents' face when when I'm I'm doing the right things. And you know, the the other week when when my, well, just the other day, sorry, my mum saw me in up north and she said, "I'm very very proud of you, son." My father-in-law mm. said to me, "I'm very very proud of you." So even though it's high stress, those little uh, leaps of faith, those little um, positive reinforcements from family and friends and people like yourself, you know, makes it makes it all better. But yeah, no, definitely. I know I shouldn't overwork myself and, uh, you know, I should take it all easy. But like I said, life is all about a balance and, and yeah. I really like your mindset and it's something to aspire to. Speaking of inspirations, who do you look up to or who inspires you? My inspiration is... I'm going to have to say Peter Jones, just in case he's listening. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my inspir- my biggest inspiration, I would say, is my parents. And I'd, uh, yeah, the, the biggest inspiration is going to be my parents. Of, of course, I look up to um, celeb- maybe celebrities or big business people who made a lot of money. But I, I don't know a lot of these people personally, but all I know is that I am where I am because my parents raised me the way that they did. Like I said, I didn't come from a, a privileged background, but the nurturing that they, they did and, and the fact that I've seen them strive. So when I was a younger kid, I, I would see them working so many hours and days just to just to provide and just to put a roof off my head and buy me nice things. So without them, I, I wouldn't be here. And if I didn't say they weren't my inspiration, then I think I'd be thinking it in the wrong way. And um, I understand how it is being a parent. I understand how it is being a father. So definitely my inspiration is my parents, uh, my partner, everyone positive that's involved in my life, you know. I mean, um, I've got this memory. Um, I'm, this might seem like nothing to my mum. I've got this memory of opening up a drawer in, um, in the living room and seeing, back when the Nintendo Wii came out, seeing a Nintendo Wii game. And I remember my my heart, my stomach just churning and thinking, wow, my mum has spent £40 on that game. Now, you know, don't get me wrong, but I, I did grow up and we had nice things. So... The fact that my mum had bought the game for me and, you know, little, little things like that really just make you think, wow, you know, your, your parents are working hard to get you nice things and, and to just provide a better life for you. So, yeah, no, parents, definitely, definitely. Adam, you, you're an absolute superstar and I think you're going to go very, well, you're already going very, very far and it's, it, it's, it's great to see your journey as well because we're getting to see it by you being all, all, all over the place at the moment. Is there anything I haven't asked you or anything you want to talk about? Um, no, I think, I think that covers it. I'm, I'm just glad that people get to hear, hear me and, um, you know, if, if anyone that's listening wants to talk to me or um, if you've got leads, of course, I've got, I've got to say that if you've got any leads, if you've got any <laughs> you, you are a, <laughs> you, you've got a salesman at heart, you've got aren't you? To, you've got to, um, but no, as, as long as um, I just want people to be happy when they see me, um, you know, if, if you do find me inspirational or, or whatever, just know that um, I'm, I'm just the same as you and anyone can do it. If you're a young person, if you're a female, if you're ethnic, if you're, uh, you know, whatever, whatever you are, wh- however you are, if you're in debt, it doesn't matter. You can do it. And that's the main positive message. And, and that's that's the reason why I, I signed up to do the podcast, because you mentioned about, you know, being positive, being inspirational. And I'm, I'm not the most inspirational person, but, um, you know, everyone should feel inspired to, to do something great. If people want to reach out to you, how can they do it? Best thing is um, anyway. So LinkedIn is a great one. Um, but if you go on my website and email email me, that's that's a great one. Or just even just call call my office line um, and just just say you want to talk to me. But um, yeah, um, my website, LinkedIn, they're probably the best ones. I'll put your details in the uh, in the description so people can reach out to you. That's absolutely great. Adam, thank you so much. I really enjoyed that. It, it was fascinating uh, just to learn about your journey and everything that's going on. You're, you're an inspiration. You're a superstar. Uh, and I wish you the best of luck. And and I can't wait to see see where you go in the future. Oh, thank you, Andrew. Very, very kind words. And no, we, we'll definitely meet again in the future. Thank you for having me. And uh, wish you the best of luck.